Oh, hello there. Come join me while I clean my fridge. I'm just kidding. Let's go check on the Cybertruck. Now everyone keeps saying, did you hear about the Cybertruck? It's rusting. Hashtag Rustgate. What makes the Cybertruck so unique is of course the stainless steel panels. It's not just any stainless steel, however, it's 300 grade stainless steel, which is a steel alloy that resists corrosion, maintains strength at high temperatures, and it's super easy to maintain. And I'm sure you've seen the videos of people using things like Windex and Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser to clean their Cybertruck. Don't do this. Let me explain. Now, I don't want to bore you with all the technical details, but how can something that resists corrosion rust? Now, this is a very common issue with not just Cybertrucks, but any car you purchase. It sits at the factory, it gathers chemicals, acid rain, and a lot of times a car comes through the train, which is what the Cybertruck did. So it gathers a ton of rail dust, which kind of causes that rust on the surface of the Cybertruck. Now, the only real way stainless steel can rust is if it gets damaged. Now, I just did a delivery day video with a delivery day checklist, so you guys should check that out if you guys are getting a Cybertruck, because a lot of specific things you need to look for especially with the stainless steel. So if you guys didn't know, and I didn't know until I had to do my research, stainless steel contains something called chromium, and that helps resist corrosion. When chromium becomes exposed to oxygen, it turns into something called chromium oxide. Dude, I feel like building on the science guy. But pretty much what that means is chromium oxide has the ability for the Tesla Cybertruck stainless steel to actually rust. And there's multiple factors that can cause it to rust. For instance, if you live near the ocean and it gets exposed to salt constantly in the air, or if you use things like Windex or a Magic Clean Mr. Eraser, you're ruining the stainless steel, which removes the chromium oxide protective layer, which can lead to rust. So what you're seeing on top of the stainless steel isn't actually rust. Well, actually it is technically rust, but it's on the top surface of the stainless steel. So let's talk about ways, actually two ways, you should never do to your Tesla Cybertruck, and I actually did it all the time on my stainless steel sink because it leaves a nice shine. However, it can juice a ton of scratches, therefore degrading the stainless steel finish. And this bad boy that I get from Costco when it's always on sale in multiple packs because I love it so much, you should never use a Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser on the stainless steel because of how abrasive it is. It even says on the Magic Eraser website, not recommended for the following surfaces, high gloss, polished, dark, brushed, satin, faux, bare polished wood, copper, and of course, stainless steel, AKA the Tesla Cybertruck. Another thing you should never use on the Tesla Cybertruck, but I've been seeing it all over social media because it's a great way to remove fingerprints on the Cybertruck, because this bad boy's fingerprint magnet, is a household item I'm sure everybody has, Windex. And at first I thought it was a great idea, Windex has it, I can get it in bulk and I'll be set for life. However, I did some digging. I went to the Windex website and I found that Windex contains something called ammonia. And ammonia is bad for stainless steel and it causes the stainless steel to rust. They do have ammonia-free Windex that you could use. However, for me personally, I wouldn't risk it because there's so many other easier options to help get rid of fingerprints, smudges, and all that stuff, which I'm gonna show you guys in a second. So my go-to whenever I get a brand new car, the first First thing I do is I do like a decontamination wash and I use this powerful stuff called Iron X. It's by CarPro. All these products I bought myself, I'm not sponsored at all. So what Iron X does is it interacts with the rust, with the iron on the surface of your paint or for instance the Cybertruck and it turns it all purple, which means it removes that rust and removes those contaminants. And after that, I'll usually whip on my clay bar on the clear coat and remove any surface contaminants. However, because it's a stainless steel, I don't have to really worry about that. But if you're feeling the surface and you kind of feel a lot of bumps, maybe there's some sort of etching on the stainless steel. So think about clay barring the car too. However, that should never happen because it is stainless steel. Also, luckily with my delivery, I didn't have any uneven stainless steel colors. It was all very uniform. However, I've seen other people's stainless steel trucks and it it had some uneven colors. Okay, so let's go ahead, wash this bad boy. Now, normally when I do do a decontamination watch, the first thing I use is of course, like some sort of dish detergent. And that's the same with the Cybertruck. You can use something like Dawn dish soap or any type of dish soap to help remove any of the grease. I don't know if you guys can see, but the water from the rain, it looks like uncoated paint pretty much. And then there you go, you can see some rust here. People are gonna think I'm crazy. It's legit raining and I'm washing my car, <laughs> but hey, Gotta do it for the video. And I know a lot of you guys wanna see if the tonneau cover is waterproof. Tonneau, tonneau, tonneau. Again, let me know in the comments if I'm saying it correctly. 
I'm Asian. I don't know why people are getting mad at me for saying tonneau cover wrong. Do you think my Asian parents ever took me off roading? <laughs> I'm gonna go now though. First cyber truck wash thing is gigante. The water just kind of sticks to the stainless steel. I don't know if you know, but there's a lot of seals, weatherproof seals on the tonneau cover as well as the bottom part to help reduce any sort of water from entering. But when the tonneau cover does open, if there's water on here, it'll fall into the, into the bed. Putting water, spraying it into that area. Like if it goes in here, I could see water entering in here, like right into these holes right here. All right, moment of truth. Huh. Barely any water in there. As you can see from the tonneau cover moving, it just kind of drops some water. There's another seal on that left side right here that prevents any water from coming in. So see there's a seal right here, so this prevents any water, so water just kind of comes straight down. So I'm just gonna quickly dry it with the microfiber towel. Even though I'm drying it, you could still see all these water spots. And man, this stainless steel is cold. I think that's one big question I have. Because it's stainless steel, what happens if it's parked outside in like Joshua Tree at 115 degree weather? for hours. If I touch it, am I gonna like legit burn myself? Did someone put a heart right there? Get that heart. Now we got the Iron X. I got the Gigante size, but do this outside. It smells like a skunk. It smells so bad. So we're gonna go and spray it on the entire car. You could even spray it on your rims. Wait a few minutes and we'll see what happens. Oh my God, it smells so bad. Ugh. This is clear spray. And then now it's turning purple. That means it's working. That's crazy. That is all the rust and iron deposits on the surface. Like seriously, spray this on another car, like another car at home. It sprays on clear. There's, it's not purple. Look, you can see it's clear right here. It's gonna turn purple. Safe on glass as well, so don't worry. But that is good. That's a good sign. That means we're getting rid of all that iron, all that rail dust. While I was driving, I noticed a ton of rust on the wheels. Definitely get the biggest size. I've never used this much before. I'm less than half done with my 33.8 fluid ounce. I feel like it's bleeding like an alien. You can already see how cleaner and shinier it looks. I didn't even do anything. Let's go and rinse it off. Look at that shine. The water is just kind of gliding right off. Like, look at this. Again, I'm six foot three, and at the highest point, it's like right here. So, this is a tall bad boy. Get a stool. Okay, just a quick look. The Iron X put in work. You could see no more rust. Even smells like stainless steel. All the rust is completely gone. The water isn't sitting like it used to. It looks like it's coated. And so I highly recommend, highly, highly recommend the Iron X. But look at this, look at the difference. All I did was spray Iron X and the Iron X removed all of that rust. So the one thing I highly recommend is Barkeeper's Friend. Barkeeper's Friend. Okay, so I wanted to stop real quick because something crazy happened when I was using Barkeeper's Friend. I was using my Scrub Daddy non-abrasive sponge as well as the Barkeeper's Friend soft cleanser on the entire Cybertruck just to do a once over so I could have a fresh coat of stainless steel so it looks clean and looks nice. However, after washing it, I noticed in the sun that it left a ton of swirl marks. Now, when I first got my Cybertruck, it had this like nice uniform haze look to it. There were scratches, but it was very uniform and it looked great. The crazy thing is we have a ton of stainless steel appliances and I've been using Barkeeper's Friend Soft Cleanser as well as my Scrub Daddy on those appliances without any issues. So that's why I wasn't hesitant at all to use it on my Cybertruck. So the biggest question I really have is, is it the Barkeeper's Friend Soft Cleanser? There is more abrasives in here. It's like glass oxidative abrasive, that's what it's called. Or is it my Scrub Daddy has it forsaken me? And is it just too rough for the stainless steel in the Cybertruck? Truck. Now again, I did definitely wet it before I used it so it's softer. So we'll see in our test. And lastly, we're also going to do one panel with Barkeeper's Friend and the 3M non-scratch blue sponge. This is supposed to be great for cleaning appliances as well. It's not supposed to leave any scratches. So as you can see, I'm going to do a nice close-up. We have panel one here. This is just finished, so there's a nice uniform, like you see there is scratches, but it's all in a circular uniform haze look to it, just like they do when they deliver it to you. Here is number two. Here is number three. You can see some scratches here if you're paying close attention. And here is panel number four. So I'm gonna be going this way so I could see if I can get some scratches in there. And then with the blue sponge, I'm gonna do that on this side. So same thing this way. A lot of people also like to use a microfiber towel to get rid of any issues. So I'm gonna do that on panel three. And lastly on panel four, I'm just gonna leave it alone, okay? So we got Scrub Daddy, Blue Sponge, and Microfiber Towel. Put a little bit on here, just like I did last time. And then now I'm just gonna do this panel and I'm gonna go left and right. 
So I'm not pushing too hard. You can see all that stuff coming out. That's normal. Panel number one is done. See, I don't see any scratches. Okay, so now we're going on to panel number two. I seriously hope it's not the scrub daddy. So then I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it down with alcohol and a fresh new microfiber towel. So I might be the scrub daddy. I'm not, I don't know for sure, but you can already see the damage I did. Now it looks like there's grains, but the scrub daddy and the barkeeper soft cleanser scratched the crap out of this panel. You can see all these scratches like right here. Oh my God, yep. Don't use any sponge, that's for sure. You could see it here as well. There's so many scratches. It doesn't seem as aggressive as this side, but there is a lot of scratches right in here. So now moving on to this section, let me see if I can raise it. You could see there is scratches here as well. It's not as aggressive. It is minimal, I will say, but you could see that there is scratches that are going across like right here. So that's what kind of scared me about using the sponges as well as the microfiber towel. You can get away if you have some issues on the surface of your stainless steel by using this as well as a microfiber towel. However, I cannot guarantee that it's not gonna scratch it a little bit. However, I do not recommend this as well as any of the sponges, unfortunately, because it does leave scratches in your stainless steel. So I'm gonna be doing a dedicated video on how to repair these scratches as well. But you just saw that using Barkeeper's Friend not only scratches the surface of the stainless steel, it also leaves a different finish than the finish that was underneath it. So real quick, I'm just gonna repair this back to how it was. I got the handy dandy polisher. I got the 3M Ultra Fine Pad here. We're just gonna use this to kind of make everything more uniform. Then we got our Scotch Bright Pad and we're gonna do that after. So I have it on the level two setting, just like before, barely any pressure. And this thing is so light. The whole point of this is to remove those uniform straight scratches. I'm gonna jump it up to three. I don't know if you could see these scratches right here. It used to be like this. It's just a little bit more uniform and it's a little dull and that's the whole point. We want that dull finish. And again, make sure you use blue painter's tape. Tape off any plastic trim in the area because it will scratch your trim. And then after that, we're gonna take this off. And then we have our Scotch-Brite blue pad. Again, barely any pressure, but just helps to create a more uniform finish. There. So if you look here, it removed these straight edges and it made everything much more uniform. Now I know what you're thinking, how can we still have that blue painter's tape? I'm gonna get rid of that with the McGuire's and foam cleanser. Then you're just gonna spray your barkeeper's foam cleanser. I have mine on level two. I'm just gonna lightly press on here. I'm just gonna go back and forth really quickly. You only have to do maybe two or three swipes and it should clean it really easily. Then after you simply just wipe it clean and you could see it removed that stuck on grime. And that is a much better panel than it was before. So if your stainless steel is encoded and you get something like fingerprints, I tried all these popular interior detail cleaners to see if it works and it does get rid of the fingerprints, but it leaves a ton of smudges and residue on the stainless steel. So great for interior, not for the stainless steel of the Cybertruck, unfortunately. And I do not recommend using things like detailer spray, or these sprayable carnauba waxes, because again, it'll leave like this weird marking on the stainless steel. So with all the testing I found, the best thing to use is ONR. No rinse, wash and shine. It's like a wireless wash, and it does a great job and doesn't leave any streaks. So let me show you. So I put two capfuls in here just to make it super concentrated. You could just put one. This quickly spritz the area, and then just dry it with the microfiber towel. And look how good that looks. Doesn't leave any streaks or residue, removes the fingerprints, so I'm definitely gonna keep this in my Cybertruck. So there you have it. That's how easy it is to wash your Cybertruck. I know everyone's complaining. It's all over the news that Cybertrucks are rusting. That's not possible. It's not rusting at all. You saw that with the Iron X, it removed all the rust. And with the Barkeeper's Friend, I was able to buff out everything. To make this thing still look so new, you can cook on it. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you guys subscribe because in my next video, I wanna do a couple tests to see what are some household stuff I could use to protect this in this steel from smudges and fingerprints and all that stuff. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.